Okay, don't mind the dirty dishes, but there was great excitement in here just now. This house martin came in. House martins, you can see, have a shorter tail than a swallow. Don't have the iridescent blues in them. They're similar to the swallow. When you see them flying, it's either Merlin or their tail that you see the difference. So I'm gonna let this fella go. I don't know why it came in. But anyway, we're gonna let this baby go. And it should be all well. So, okay. There we go, off it goes. It's very happy to be free. Come on, girls! Come on! Woo! Come on! Squish me into the machinery. Come on. It like squeezing in between me. They're just squeezing. <laughs> Come on, girls. You've got to move out of the way. Look, I can't do this. You're literally preventing me from moving forward. Now. This is only a sample just to get them in here. There. Whoa. Okay. Now, for you others, there's the bucket. Oh, I didn't mean to hit you. You moved. No, 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 no. Ear feather, a little bit. You stay in there. Good girls. Okay. There's only a few. You'll get more food later. Just right now, you're having a little bit of food just to get you in here. So, hay started. But um, to make matters worse, I can't get straw and I'm due to get some in the next week or so, I hope, fingers crossed. So these are, I have four or five bales of hay that I bought earlier that are a bit moldy. So I'm using these first. They've got patches of mold in them like right there. You can kind of see, but they also smell. So you can see the difference between that and that. Anyway, so I'm using the moldy bits of hay to spread around the straw. And so that's the first bale in, and I'm gonna put a second bale here. The problem is we haven't had enough sun this year to make enough sugars in the grasses for the proteins. So the yews are kind of not putting on condition, no matter how much grasses they're eating, no matter how much I'm moving them, etc. So I'm gonna house them early before they go to the ram. 
and try and feed them up on hay and I get alfalfa bales, which are really expensive and um, sugar beet pulp and rolled barley to fatten them up a little. But this is an issue that I hear lots of farmers are having this year is uh, fattening sheep up on the grasses and beef. Everything's behind because the sugars, uh, the proteins in the grasses that the sun creates, it's just not there because there's not been enough sun and there's not been enough rain. So the nutrient value in the grasses is kind of low. So this is what holistic management is like. The weather's fine, but if the grass was growing and really good, I could get the sheep, leave the sheep out for another couple of months. And I'll probably turn them out again. I will when the ram is happening. But this is what I'm gonna do for the moment, bring them in. And anyway, that's carbon that I'm bringing onto the farm. So the sheeps are gonna poo and eat this and poo it out there. So that is getting more carbon on the farm for the soil. So this is what I'm looking at this is, on the other hand, yes, it's a pain in the arse to bring the sheep in early, but I'm also creating more nutrient value to return to the soil on the farm. This is another farm's carbon that I get to sequester into my so soil as organic matter. And to me, this is instead of fertilize, artificial fertilizer, this is, so the other side of it is the plus side, which is I am getting other farmers carbon to sequester on my farm, make the soils richer, deeper, more biodynamic, and have a much healthier biome. So you can see this roll, I've got to floof it out and then get a second bale. second male. Can I get the other ring for it? And uh, so then we'll have two bales in the shed and the sheep will come in out of the sun. Poor girls. But they're gonna have lots of food to get them going again. <coughs> frighten the life out of the cat. <coughs> oh, hey, Dust. Welcome to winter. Okay. Now, rings. The last of the swallows. These are the most recently fledged of the second litter. These are swallows. There are not very many left. Most of them went the other day. They've got longer tails than the mar pine martens. Pine martens, house martens. Jeez, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Anyway, I'm taking this up, spreading it out. And the sheep will come in here soon. Oh, Lord. Farming with climate change is gonna become more and more interesting and challenging. spread it out as much as possible because there's not much of it. I 
and they packed them tight. Brindle, what are you doing? Hmm? I suddenly turn around and there's a whole load more swallows. They must have been, lots of them must be fledging at the moment. The last, mo vast majority have gone. These must be the remaining few swallows that are gonna head out. Anyway. Nearly done. Just got to get the ring around that bale and then the yeahs are all waiting for me up there and I'll bring them down. It's lovely still having a few of the swallows anyway, darting about the place. They are so ready to come in. I'm not quite ready for them. I'm setting up their bins of food. But they're saying, we're ready to come in. Look at those big clouds. Thunderheads in the background. We're due some torrential rain showers after two, three today. That's a huge thunderhead character. I know, in a minute. Okay. All set up. They have their sugar beet alfalfa feed and they're ready for their stampede down down the field and into the shed so the thunderhead has moved on but another one is moving in since a few minutes ago hey girls are you ready see i mean there's lots of grass there's plenty of grass it's just, there's no sugar in it, no proteins in it, because we've had a lack of that this summer. Huge lack of that, which puts the sugars in here. It's either been no sun and clouds or no rain. So it has been not a great year. Hey, Castrol, are you excited? You are all excited. <laughs> They're going to the orchard laneway first. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! They've heard me do all the noise. Now they're suddenly going to realize it's the other pen, it's the other troughs where the food is. <laughs> there we go. Now. There they are, spread out. Oh, somebody's been an Egypt. Hey, you, you did something silly. You overran where the troughs were, ear feather. Silly ear feather. Okay, I better close this gate off. That takes two hands. Literally, they're finishing their food and it's starting to rain. Split splots are happening. Sun might be shining, but that cloud is raining on us, bringing rain. So they're beginning to get in here into the shed, sort through the hay. Hey, a little bit. It's 
going to sort through the water. Okay, lots of ladies. Hopefully this will be the beginning of really getting the condition back on them. It's just not been a good year. Speaking to many farmers and they've just not had a good year of grazing. The grass here is here. It's just not got the uh, protein in it because of the lack of sun. Anyway, I'm gonna move these. See, they're eating the alfalfa. See, there's that alfalfa stuff, which is very expensive, but it's really good for them, good fiber for them. Earlier this morning, uh, these two tires were nearly flat, so we had to pump them up to do the hay and so I'm now taking them off to remove them see it's two of them both this side I must have gone through a thorn bush or something so both one side so I'll have to take these in to get repaired and here comes more rain I, my job is being inspected oh. Somebody's arrived. Cat's even going to see who's arrived. <laughs> Here comes the rain. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Hey, 
Leave it. Maya, leave it. Hey, I said leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Come here. Come on. Leave them be. There we go. Hey, Brindle, back here. Come on. Okay. These guys are going into a field that over 30 plus days has not had any grazing. It has lots of thistles. I didn't get a chance to mow it, but I will to top it. After they've grazed it down, I'll go and mow it. But the um, birds have been having a feast both from the insects in those thistles, as well as from the seeds. Floofy white field. The lambs are much better off than the uh, yews because uh, they've been getting the best grass from the best fields. So they've, there's, they've got good condition on them. Big fat round bellies. So they're in good form. Now this is a different mineral lick than the one they had in the previous field. That's why they're all gathered around it, wanting to lick from it. But you can see this grass. There's a lot more grass in that. So they've got a lot more eating in it. Good growth, but not much protein. And you can see the sheep is eating the fallen ash leaves. Do you see that's an ash leaf that's eating? That's fallen, and that's a really good thing because in eating those leaves, see it's eating another ash leaf, in eating those leaves, it stops the ash dieback disease going back into the ground. So it's a really good thing having sheep because they love eating the ash leaves. So they will clean up all the ash leaves over the, over the autumn months, which prevents ash dieback from really getting a grip. They're all having a lovely feast up here. Anyway, there's the great oak.